Xavi Alonso's first full season, Jürgen, it's very possible that they could pull off the treble. Speaking to your friends in Germany, what has he done? What has been the secret to his success? <laughs> Well, obviously, the work that he's doing on the training ground, the, the way he kind of got the entire team believe in what he tells them. Um, the whole club believes in his approach and, uh, and the continuity, the way he is working and he has the team play. You know? um, and, um, and that's why, why things are going so well for Bayer Leverkusen. They're going to win the title in the Bundesliga, mm. and which is good for the Bundesliga because, I mean... Uh, uh, Bayern Munich, I don't know, 10 years in a row, 11 years in a row, it's, it's, it's good. You know, give somebody else the trophy here and there. <laughs> and, uh, and now they're also in the semi-final, obviously, for the German Cup. The German Cup is like the FA Cup. It's a big deal in Germany. And the surprise is that there were two second division teams in the semi-final and one third division team with Saarbrücken, mm. who today obviously lost... Uh, against Kaiserslautern, but having Kaiserslautern and Dusseldorf now being the remaining other two teams is, is, uh, is also a little bit of a sign of what's going on in Germany. The German second Bundesliga, I think, has the fourth most average spectators of all the top leagues in Europe. They have 30,000 average, the second division in Germany, with teams like Kaiserslautern, Hertha Berlin, Dusseldorf, Nuremberg, Hamburg, and so on. So it's not a surprise that actually Dusseldorf now is in the semi-final against Leverkusen. And Leverkusen is the only first division team in the semi-final. But now they have the big chance. Obviously, they have the big favorites to beat Dusseldorf there tomorrow. Um, to go there and uh, go for the double, the two, two trophies. Or even, you know, if they add, <laughs> if they add the Europa League to it, then uh, it's, it's an unbelievable season for by Leverkusen and Xabi Alonso. Jürgen, it's the first, uh, sorry, sorry, this is the first time we've had you on, Jürgen, since Xavi Alonso said that he's going to stay at Bayer Leverkusen. <clears throat> Do you agree with that decision? Absolutely, 1,000%. Um, I, I think, you know, he just started a very exciting project there in Leverkusen. Um, they give him all, all he, he needs, you know. He's, he has all the support from the club, from the, the area, the environment, the city and, and the fans. And, and uh, it's a very good team. It's a team that, you know now has three, four players in the German national team going to the European Championship, uh, has high quality, and, uh, and then he's going to play a Champions League season with Bayer Leverkusen next year where he can prove a point also for, for him personally as a, as a manager. And as we've discussed before, you know, if he goes now, let him go to Bayern Munich or to Liverpool or, or you know, whenever Carlos Angelotti decides to step out of Real Madrid, go to Madrid, um, he, there's nothing to win right now there for him. Mm. You know, there's everything to win for him at Bayer Leverkusen. Prove a point next year, carry them to the next level, you know, keep it uh, exciting. Um, to, he has the players fully behind him, he has the club fully behind him. I think it's the absolute right decision. All the other teams, they will come back in a couple of years' time. The, I don't see a problem because he's one of the most talented coaches out there in, in world football. He obviously doesn't feel that the time is quite right, or he's quite, although he's going to win a Bundesliga, barring a disaster, he obviously feels that he's got a lot more to learn before he steps in. And a bit, Leverkusen are a big club, yeah. right? But it's not Liverpool, it's not Bayern Munich, and it's not one of these, so... You know, sometimes you take a rest because next year you get some injuries or you lose some players, you don't, the signings don't work out, and... You know, there's always a risk to that, not, not stepping into another job, but, but it's, it's a calculated one that he feels is the right one for him, and you can't argue with that. And in terms of the team, you know, we saw Andrich there in playing for Germany and Leverkusen, you know, players like him and the signing of Xhaka and how he's found uh, the best positioning to get a team of players around Florian Wirtz. And let's not forget, while Bayern Munich have had, you know the most expensive signing in their history, Harry Kane, terrific player up front. They lost their best striker, Boniface, yeah. and have done for months now. All right, they've got Patrick Schick, who's a very experienced player, but they lost a guy who was absolutely flying. So whatever, and, and obviously Jürgen mentioned the amount of comebacks they've had, but whoever he's been able to put in the team, they've been able to do a job. In contrast to that, to what we saw at the weekend yes. yeah. in, in the Allianz Arena, that was a shocker. It, it was a shocker, Jürgen. And ever since Thomas Tuchel announced that he'd be leaving, 
there hasn't been any sort of response from the Bayern players. It is difficult. It is frustrating. The expectations are the highest in that club. They expect you to get uh, the German Championship automatically, the, the German Cup. And on top of that, you've got to deliver the Champions League every now and then. Um, so it was the right decision to, to go to the end. Um, now it will be interesting to see what is the reaction of the team against Arsenal in the Champions League. Because it's still... You know, if you look at that team and you look at that roster, they're still capable to win the Champions League. Um, mm. Even if it's overall it's so far a disappointing season uh, with Bayer Leverkusen running away and winning, being unbeaten the whole season, basically. So this will be, that will be a nail-biter for all Bayern Munich fans, the, the, um, the game against Arsenal. Here's the problem. Right, you got Kim on the bench who was, who's just lost his form. Uh, it would seem, after, you know, being absolutely brilliant in Napoli. Uh, you had Harry Kane, who's been brilliant in Germany, but he, he had a real off day at the weekend. Yes. He missed two setters with his head before he scored one that was chopped off for offside. But you're not going to win the Champions League with that back four. you got you got Davies, who's likely to be leaving. you got Kimmich, who doesn't want to play right back anymore, wants to play in the midfield, but we know that's been an ongoing tug of war because... Uh, Thomas Tuchel wanted Paulinho and wanted others to come in and play, in, and Goretzka hasn't had great form. And then you've got Delecht and Dyer. There is not a hope in hell that you... you. I mean, I, I don't personally think they'll beat Arsenal. There's not a hope in hell you're going to win this competition uh, with some of the teams with the pace they've got. Uh, I mean, that back four against Arsenal, those two centre-halves, they're going to have to play on the edge of their own box mm. because they can't run. I mean, De Ligt's the quickest of the two, and he ain't quick. So, anybody with any pace, and Arsenal are not the quickest through the middle, but they're quick in the wide areas. Anybody with any pace is going to rip that back four, particularly those two centre-halves, to pieces. So, unless he goes back to... the diff And I know Pomecano has been playing well, but, my God, you're not telling me Kim is not whatever. It, if Kim's having a, a, a bad season... That's still better than an Eric Dyer great season. Yeah. That's what that's how I'm looking at this. And for some reason, and I'm not and I'm not saying he hasn't been playing his best. He's not. But when Eric Dyer is the answer at centre half for Bayern Munich, that's problem problematic. And so unless that changes between now and the Arsenal game, that back line. They're not, they're, they they got no chance. Well, not get no chance. They got a slim chance. But it's going to be an intriguing tie in the first leg, of course, next week. Uh, one last thing on Bayern, Jurgen. You take a look at the odds uh, for the next manager as someone who sat in the hot seat. What is it about managing that this club which is so intense? Um, it's the expectations, the daily expectations from uh, everyone working at the club, obviously your bosses, you know, the management above you, um, and and uh, the fans. It's it's just, if you don't win your game on the weekend or midweek, you know, the next days will be miserable at the training ground. You know, they expect you to win every game, they expect you to win every title, because they set the standards so high over the last 30, 40 years, this club, um, it is just basically an automatic that you as a manager going in there, you just have to deliver. You have to deliver and uh, sometimes it gets very politically um, and it's part of it. And uh, the only thing that really helps you uh, if you have some arguments there is win your games. But really win your games almost every, every game. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jürgen, uh, before we let you go, I've got to get your reflections on the watch party. <laughs> Uh, that we saw, of course, you went to Atlanta with, with Seb. How was it for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a, no, Sebastian, we had a fantastic time. Uh, it was a great watch party there for, for the Bundesliga Classico there. Uh, I was surprised there were a lot, a lot of German fans actually there in Atlanta. And there were also a lot of fans not necessarily being Bayern Munich or Dortmund fans, which surprised me as well. No, it was a really cool event. Oh, fantastic, uh, Jürgen. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.